It starts with reality. With Mars Dogs, it always started with reality. It doesn't mean we cannot be imaginative or all of that, but in reality, hacking and people who break systems are pretty creative, naturally. So we want to inspire ourselves from them. This is a big moment for us in production. Basically, all the parts of the game are colliding together for the first time. And for the past months, we've been able to play the game from beginning to end. So now we see how things are coming together, and you could almost say the game has a life of its own at this point. When you finish a game after almost five years, you, you need to sleep on it a little bit. Then afterwards, what's exciting is when you start really understanding what you tried to do with the first game, what went well, what went less good, and also uh, what the players have said. So Watch Dogs was, first of all, a new IP, which is a big deal. It means that you start from almost nothing. I think the new idea in Watch Dogs 1 was to talk about an hyper-connected society, something that was uh, becoming very important in our day-to-day -day lives. Chicago was one of the most surveilled cities in North America, so we talked a lot about cameras and surveillance and being watched. When we played Watch Dogs, you probably played something you never played before because the city was sort of alive. People were not just people walking around the street, but you could hack into their lives and you could exploit them. You could see their secrets. You could manipulate the city, the bridges and the steam pipes and the traffic lights. What we basically created with Watch Dogs 1 was a, a playground where everything was connected. So finally shipping the game. Well, a lot of people were happy and excited. We also got a lot of feedback and we listened to that feedback. I personally spent months reading forums and reading all of the player feedbacks I could see on the web. We wanted to know what people felt and what they wanted to get from the game and what we could improve in the future. At that point, we knew we were going to make a Watch Dogs 2. We felt like we really did a big milestone with the original Watch Dogs. But with Watch Dogs 2, we could really deliver on the fantasy of being a hacker. This time around, we're in San Francisco. For us, San Francisco struck the chord because it meant the very birth of the attitude of a hacker. For this setting of Watch Dogs 2, we wanted to have a different vibe. So our San Francisco keeps all the important parts of the Bay Area. And there's a different feel, different vibe, a different look to all of the areas of our world. 
We wanted to kind of represent all these different areas and the different collections of people that live in these areas and what their lifestyles and their personalities are like. So we're building a game where basically it's almost a simulation. You're in that world, and if you stop moving and you look around, you feel the world is alive, right? This is the promise of what an open world game is. We broke the feeling that the world is centered on you, the player. So characters shouldn't only react to you, they should react to each other. You know, maybe people start fights. Maybe someone calls the cops on someone else than you. Maybe a dog barks after someone else and chases him down the street. You need to feel as if this city is alive, even if you do nothing. And then if you start doing things, if you start playing in the world, the city should react to what you're doing. It should feel normal. It should surprise you also in how it reacts. We were really interested in the city itself. It almost feels like the Wild West of technology. And how would you know? How couldn't you set something in the Wild West of technology? It's a world that has a lot of potential for gameplay. I mean, if you're a hacker and you go in Silicon Valley and you have the head office of some of the biggest tech company in the world, what will you do? Can you hack into those places? What will you find? So it's a very intriguing setting for a hacker who's exploring the world. So as we're crafting this world, we're putting in it all of the factions that should be in it. So for example, we have various criminal groups trying to fight over the underground of the city. We also have corporations trying to make money and potentially even manipulate people and society. And we also have other groups of hackers trying to tap into the technology that has been set up in the city. Once again, CTOS, the smart city system that was in the first Watch Dogs, is installed in San Francisco. And various people are trying to tap into it to exercise control power or to try to make money. In creating a hero for Watch Dogs 2, we wanted somebody new, somebody that could embody uh, the spirit of California and the spirit of San Francisco. But we needed somebody who was going to be really worthy of all the cool stuff that we wanted to do in the game. So, our hero in Watch Dogs 2 is Marcus Holloway. He's a young hacker, very brilliant in what he does. Because of the injustices that he's seen, both being from Oakland and also having been profiled the wrong way and being accused of a crime he actually didn't commit, that sort of made him go against the system. In terms of visual, we always try to create uh, iconic attributes to the character so that he can be memorable and people want to play him, but still feels credible inside our world. He's a perfect blend between somebody that's tech savvy, that represents a little bit the internet culture, but also has uh, that, that athletic and rebellious feeling to him. So we had to decide from the beginning what things were comparable between Aiden and Marcus and what things would be different. We focused on parkour. We wanted Marcus to be a lot better at parkour than Aiden. And we're not talking about just like climbing on things, but like being able to like flow and chain moves together. So he's a pretty good fighter. But he's got some interesting quirks too. Uh, he's a more expressive guy. We tried, really tried hard to figure out what kind of melee weapon Marcus would have. We tried a whole bunch of things, and some things were pretty cool, and some things just didn't work at all. We did a lot of research, and we, we basically did what Marcus would have done. We went onto the internet, and we started watching videos, and started reading websites, and trying to figure out what kind of stuff we could make. Pre pretty much all the stuff that you probably shouldn't search at work. In the end, what we stumbled across was this idea of taking a billiard ball and attaching it to a paracord lanyard. And we took this, and we handed this to the stunt team, and the first thing that we saw was it was fast. It was so fast that like we couldn't believe how fast they were swinging this around their body. And I, as soon as I saw this video, I'm like, this is crazy. We, we got it. Citizens of the world.
May we have your attention. When we say we want to make a game about hacking, really a hacker, it's a culture, but you can have various motivations. The motivation we're excited about was what we call hacktivism. People who want to impact society and have ideals to defend. So just in the background and in the fantasy of it, you're not a hacker in Watch Dogs 2. You're a dead tech hacker. You're a member of a community and you're doing grand stuff and big exposure of important information to society because you're not alone and you're working with other people. The first thing that you have to do when you're talking about hackers is you kind of have to respect where they came from originally. Their messages sound very serious, but there's also a lulzy element to it, the way they have fun with what they're saying. We took that and we said, okay, so what if this is the sort of the spirit of DeadSec and of our heroes? What if their spirit is still rooted in the trolling? It's a joke, we're gonna have fun with it, but they still have something important to say. The DeadSec visual was really important for me because it represents everything that's cool about Watch Dogs. It's stylized, it's edgy, and it's raw, and it's underground. Uh, tapping into the horror genre, uh, tapping into the internet culture with all the memes and also all the visual language of the internet. So there are various characters, various people inside of DeadSec. Some are a bit more violent, some have more ideals, some are maybe more intellectual. But they all have in common that they want to fight to preserve a sense of freedom. They don't want people to abuse tech to take control over people. But, you know, I'm not saying they are uh, knights, you know. <laughs> they, are, they are rebellious, they, they do their own things, their own way, and they want to have fun. That's, that's also one thing, is, you know, a sense of freedom, also a sense of fun through that group. We are dead sick. Join us. The new idea for hacking and Watch Dogs 2 is to let the player uh, create his own solutions. We're adding a lot more depth to hacking. So you have a lot more control, a lot more flexibility in how you hack the world. So one big category of hacking and Watch Dogs 2 is the entire branch of pushing remote controls to its limit. One of the big things on Watch Dogs is hacking vehicles. I think this is a real game changer because vehicles are everywhere in the world, and if you can hack into the drive system of a car, you can pretty much drive it wherever you want. So making sure if you see a forklift in the world, it shouldn't be a forklift. You can just like move the box up down. You should just like a camera, press a button and become that thing. One of the core things that we're doing is we're opening up the game with Watch Us 2. You can hack every character. You can hack every car in the game and you can hack most of the electronics within the city. So that's a lot of potential targets for hacking, and that's not even counting your own tools. Well, in Watch Dogs 2, we brought in a lot more toys and things to play with because we wanted to embrace the maker culture. DeadSec have these really interesting, intricate guns. They're built on a 3D printer. Basically, the cutting edge technology of 3D printing, which is actually uh, building it with metal. It's also got this really cool taser. So if you want to play the game completely non-lethal and not actually kill anybody, you can totally do that. We're playing with a lot more uh, crafted items and a, a lot more of little devices that you can use. One of the things that people kind of like that we've done, they really like what we've done, is we've created toys for Marcus. He has an RC jumper. It's got little wheels, and it's even got this little robotic arm that he can sort of deploy, and he can interact with things. He can unplug things and replug them and take out screws. That's a neat little toy. And then the other gadget he's got is this quadcopter. And it's more about scouting and being the eye in the sky. First person view on it is incredible because you're just zipping through the city. It feels like you're flying while well, you are flying. Another branch, which is kind of connected to it, is the concept of manipulating people. In Watch Dogs 1, you could only hack the people that were marked as potential target. Now, you can target the person you want, and you can hack them in multiple ways. For example, I could hack one person and distract them, have their phone ringing so they look at their phone uh, to create a distraction. Later on in the game, you'll also be able to do things we call mass hacking, which is, well, why only hack one if you could hack them all? There's one thing that I really believe about Watch Dogs players is that there is no Watch Dogs player. There are many types of Watch Dogs players. You should be deciding how you want to play the game. So that means you can play a mission full gun blazing, that's the way you like to play. Full stealth. Or through hacking only, 
project yourself in computers, take control of electronics, influence people, and try to get to your goal that way. We try to really support all players' types across all different styles of play, and also allow players to combine and mash these styles and play together too. If you've been playing a certain way for a while, we want the game to kind of challenge you to try different things, but also not force you into playing the game a certain way. We work to improve the driving, make it more accessible, while keeping all the different styles of vehicles and adding a lot of physics and feel to all the vehicles. So we keep the depth, but have more accessibility. The team is super happy with the result we've had, and I hope gamers will be just as excited. We are very excited by the potential of what we call Seamless Online. We start doing that in Watch Dogs 1, so we're expanding on that. We cross path with friends in the city. So you playing in single player and you're crossing path with another player who's also playing in single player. Both of you are members of DeadSec, so you're friends, and you can just walk up to each other, you'll say hello, hit the button, and form a co-op team. And what we're going to be showing in the next couple of months is an example of how those things work together to create magical gameplay moments. The city of San Francisco and the whole Bay Area is exciting. It's vast. You're going to find a ton of things to do that are unique to you. Basically build your own moments. You know, create a situation that you start laughing at and you say, wow, this happened, and you want to share it with friends. You don't want to just be like a roller coaster, a theme park ride where I go through all the same beats as everybody else. You decide what you want to be spending your time doing. That can be multiplayer, that can be focusing on stories, that can be just exploring the world. Whichever activity you do, we're going to make sure you get rewarded to get you closer to the end game. That's kind of the promise we're making to gamers. You always know it when something starts to click, it starts to work, everything changes. You stop seeing individual components, animations, or, or texture maps, or vehicles. You just start to see the experience as a whole. It changes on the floor. People get excited about it. This is it. It exists. We are always making the game with the player in mind. They have always been the driving force. When you come with a sequel that really earns its two, you know, that really does a lot of new things, that has a lot of surprises. It's a great feeling. In the end, there's nothing more accurate than this. Looking at something, trying to understand it. Solely for f***ing up with this stuff. Click here to join DeadSec and receive exclusive in-game rewards and more. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and be the first to see new trailers and behind-the-scenes action.